So welcome back to the last video in the financial modeling series. Today I'll walk you through how I managed to complete this little side project. Amongst other things, we will make sure that we have all the relevant journal entries in our data set, that is for the profit and loss statement, the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. We will then make sure that the balance sheet balances. That's always a check that you want to do with every three-way financial statement model that you have. And last but not least, we'll make sure that we can appropriately visualize the different versions before we then save them. You can already see in the background that the workflow, at least on the surface, has become a little bit less complex. There's one component, a data app, that I've bundled all the data creation into, also some visualizations. And then there's the visualizer where you can compare different saved versions. So let's get started with a quick demo on how both of these components work and what they look like. And after that, we'll dive into some details. Let's move into the first component and let's open the interactive view. And the first thing that needs to be done is to select a file. We take the first version that I've pre-prepared. And after that, you can see that only the user inputs are visible. There's one for the creditors and one for the debtors that we need to fill in. I've changed the creditors to 40 and I'll also change the version name. When I then click refresh, that is when the actual data gets loaded and you will see some visualizations to pop up. The first one is a balance sheet. You may also notice in the top right corner that it says the balance sheet balances. Then we have two versions of a combined bar and line chart that visualize the balance sheet data. And last but not least, we have a so-called Senke diagram for the profit and loss, where you can literally see how your revenue flows through the profit and loss. And this can be changed to different years as well. So once we're happy with the data, you see that checkbox. Do you want to save this version? Once you click that, you can then go and hit the refresh button once again. And this will now make sure that the version gets saved. So let me now quickly grab the second input file. Let's load it by clicking refresh, change the version name. This is a final one. And now we check the box again to have this saved and click refresh once more. Now also this version gets saved to the database. Let's now move on and open the visualization app. And once it's open, the first thing we'll do is to look whether we can find the two versions that we've just saved. After that, the visuals will display. You will notice that initially the starting balances are zero. And that's because in this version, we have all the journals that make up the balance sheet in as well. So naturally everything should net out to zero, which is a good sign because that tells us that the logic that we've built holds up. Let's now change some of the selected value types so that we only have those items relevant to the profit and loss. And after that, we can also have a look at cash. To start with, let's drop everything and then let's reselect revenue, direct expenses and indirect expenses, which are the profit and loss categories we've set up. And there you can see that the balances show. If we now swap to the year minus quarter view, the bridge works as well. And if we now ditch the PL items and add in the cash in and cash out view, we can see that bridge as well. And at the bottom, we can still see the full PL in order. So let's select one of our versions and the drop down to change the periodization also works. With that said, enough of a demo. Let's go ahead and look into 
the main workflow a little bit. Let's open up the calculate and save plan versions workflow and take a look at where we have to make changes. We will have to make changes wherever we did our revenue and expense calculations. And let's start with the bottom branch where we transformed our indirect expenses from the Excel sheet. Let's zoom in and recap. So at the beginning, we have our table manipulator where we have the cost categories and then we add our value type as indirect expenses. You can now see this column expressions node where the value type is accounts payable and the value has turned positive. And that's exactly the trick. We negate the value of our debit entry to make it a credit. So in our case, credits are positive and we then change the value type to accounts payable. And with that, we are pretty much done except for we still have to concatenate both data sets. So we double the number of rows that the new table had has, but we also now have the full journal. So debit side and credit side. So that was technique one. For the upper branch, I again could leverage the columns expressions node. And what I did there was almost the same, except that I could just add additional columns in this node. And also I simply negated the corresponding value. So negating the revenue value turns into our accounts receivable and negating the expense value turns into accounts payable. The best thing is in the unpivot node, it simply works because I didn't have to change anything. If we look into the configuration, any unknown columns, so any new column will also be unpivoted automatically. So that generates the right format straight away. And in the end, we just concatenate both again, the upper branch and the lower branch. And that means that we now have a full set of journals for our revenue and all our expenses. That is exactly half the job done, because if you think about it, if we would stop here, then we would indefinitely build up our accounts receivable and our accounts payable without them ever turning into cash. So there's one more job to do, which is create the journals that reduce our accounts receivable and our accounts payable balances and that then touch our bank account. So the cash in and cash out bookings. So that at the end, we have a full circle from PNL to balance sheet to cash flow. That, that happens in this next section, generate balance sheet to cash journals. We start by filtering only for our accounts receivable and payable entries. And next we negate it because that's the counter entry. That happens again in a column expressions node. And after that, we split it by accounts receivable and accounts payable into two branches because now we want to change the dates to when these journal entries need to happen. And that is driven by these additional widgets that you already have seen in the demo. We have one for debitors and one for creditors where we can specify the number of days that should occur between an accounts receivable and payable booking and when they turn into cash. And these numbers are saved in these flow variables as debtors and as creditors. So we pass this to a date and time shift node next. And the date and time shift node is configured to move the original date by the number of days specified in the flow variable. So that is being done via the flow variables tab. As you can see here, it's the debtors variable. And the bottom branch does exactly the same. So next, we pass the data set to a column expressions node for both pieces. And what's happening there is the old trick again. We negate the value and we change the type. So for accounts payable, that is negating the value and changing the value type to cash out. And for accounts receivable, it's going to be cash in as shown here. And after that, all that's left to be done is to stack those data sets on top of each other. First of all, 
accounts receivable and cash in, and then accounts payable and cash out. And after that, in this last concat node, we stack those on top of each other again before we join them with the PNL. So in this concatenate node, we finally have all the journals that are needed to get our balance sheet to balance, if that worked out okay. And from here on out, we can then focus on loading the data that exists in the database already, concatenating it with the new data and writing it to our table file. Next part of the workflow makes sure that our balance sheet indeed does balance. So first of all, from the date we extract the year and the month number using the daytime part extractor node. And then the easiest way to check whether our journals balance is by using a group by node. And what we do is we group by year and month number and we sum up the value. And theoretically, everything should zero out all the journals for every individual month. And if we look at the sum value filtered up and down, you can see that it's indeed zero, which is very good news. Next part of the workflow does another round of checks and formats the data in a slightly different way. What I want to get is the rolling balances per period. So we start by splitting the different accounts into different data sets, then group by year and months again. And then very important, we sort it by year and second of all by months ascending so that it's in the right order. And that then allows us to use the moving aggregator node with the setting K cumulative computation for the sum of our sum value column. And we do that for all the split up data sets. And the result is that in the column of the right, we have our rolling balance. So if you look at this example, the minus 7,150 is the sum of the 11,000 something and the negative 18,000. In the constant value column, we then give the rolling balance type. In this case, that is assets and liabilities, which is the sum of accounts payable and accounts receivable. We do the same flow for all the different pieces that belong together, like profit and loss for profit, and cash in and cash out for cash flow. After that, we stack it all back together in the concatenate node. So the sum value column is the movement in the individual period and the sum sum value column is a rolling balance of the different period for the, the rolling balance type. The rolling balance is calculated. We now go ahead and pivot and regroup by year and month number and click the retain row order number to make sure it comes in the right order. And we pivot by the rolling balance type. So that means we get one column for each of the types and we aggregate by our rolling balance column using the sum aggregation method. That gives us this nice little table. As you can see, there are some missing values that we need to handle carefully. Given that we are talking about a rolling balance here, we cannot set it to zero, but we need to use a previous value column because obviously if the balance hasn't changed, then it stays the same in the period where the value is missing. With that done, we can now add a check column by adding a column expressions node that adds up the profit and loss, the cash and the asset and liabilities rolling balance. And if our balance sheet balances, then there should be nothing but zeros in that check column. And it looks like that's the case. So now I filter that for the condition to show everything in that check column that is not zero. And after that, I added an empty table switch node. And with that, I can then decide which of these two text widgets I want to show. So if the table is empty, we show the balance sheet balances one. And if not, then the balance sheet does not balance one. So now that we have our rolling balances sorted, we want to do exactly the same for our monthly movements. So we add another pivot node and do the same, but 
aggregate the sum value column, which is the column holding the monthly movements instead of the rolling balance. Here we also have to handle any missing values that may occur. And because these are monthly movements, if a value is missing, which means there has not been a journal, we can comfortably set that to zero. Then we add constant value columns to both data sets to indicate the type as either being movement or balance. Next, we concatenate both data sets so that we have movement and balance in one. And then we sort it again, just to make sure that the order is correct by year and months ascending and by type descending, because in our final balance sheet table, we want to have the movement first. In column expressions, we then generate a new column, which combines the year, the month and the type into one string. And this is going to be the header column in our balance sheet table, if you remember. In order to finally get there, we need to do a little trick. So we transpose the table, so flip it on its side, and then we make this column that we just created the new row ID column. And you can do that by using the row ID node, set it to use column and select the new column that we just created, and then click remove the selected column. And if we then flip it back around using the transposer node, you can see that we have the row IDs as column headers in our final table, which is exactly what we wanted. After this, there's some additional data ranging going on in the branch just above. I won't go through that piece by piece. I just format the data in a way that is compatible with the additional charts that I've added in the top right. These are combined bar and line charts in two versions. One version where the bars show the movement and the lines show the balance. And the other one where the bars show the balance and the lines show the movements. Not 100% sure which one I like best, but I think they are both quite useful representations in certain circumstances. What do you think? The last thing that I now want to show you, and I won't walk you through the data wrangling process in a lot of detail, is this uh, PNL Sankey chart that I created. This is, I think, one of the more useful visualizations that I've created because you can literally see how your revenue flows through your PNL. On the left, you start with your revenue categories and how they make up your total revenue. You can then see how your revenue covers your direct expenses and turns into gross profit and how that gross profit covers your indirect expenses and turns into profit. Overall, really, really cool visualization. And with that, I think it's time to wrap this video series up. I really enjoyed building this model. I will upload the final version to my space on the Nime Hub where you can access it and explore it. And I definitely will pick this topic up in the future. This exercise has given me a very good feeling on for which topics I might want to develop components to make them a little bit easier. Maybe even develop some custom nodes in form of an extension. Let's see. And I think it is definitely a viable alternative to Excel. There were certain things that I found much easier than modeling in a spreadsheet tool like Excel. For example, creating all the journals to make sure that everything is complete. And that then allowed me to spend a little bit more time on thinking about how I can wrangle the data into the right format that allows me to visualize them in what I think are very useful ways. So with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this series and I will see you next time.